Now, let us express all the vector relationships of projectile's position, velocity, and acceleration by evaluating different cases of projectile. However, in each case, the component of the acceleration vector are the following. A sub x, or the acceleration in the x-axis, is equal to zero. And A sub y, or the acceleration along the y-axis, is equal to negative g, or negative acceleration due to gravity. The first case in projectile motion is when the projectile is thrown at an angle. Okay? So, our, just like this one, this ball is thrown at a certain angle represented by theta. Now, if this block here is the initial velocity vector of our ball, it has the following components. V sub 0x is the adjacent side. Therefore, V sub 0x is equal to V sub 0 cos theta or cosine theta. And V sub y, this one, is the opposite component. Therefore, we will use sine theta, making the equation for the, our v sub 0 y will be equal to v sub 0 times sine theta. So, for example, the man here throws this ball at an angle just to pass this one through that hole. Now, let's illustrate a diagram for that ball, and it will look like this one. Now, let's analyze what happened to the ball. Horizontally, the projectile has constant velocity but no acceleration since a sub x is equal to zero. Thus, it moves equal x distances in equal time intervals. Vertically, the projectile has constant acceleration due to gravity. Thus, it has equal changes in velo vertical velocity for the same interval. And also, please take note that at maximum height, V sub y is equal to zero, but acceleration is still negative acceleration due to gravity. Now, please also take note that for two positions at equal elevations, but in different times, just like V sub 1 and V sub 3, they have equal speed, the same magnitude, but opposite or different direction. So we therefore say V sub 1 and V sub 3 are at the same elevation, so they have the same speed, but different directions. So using that illustration and concepts that we discussed, let's derive the equations for our horizontal motion and vertical motion for case number one and case number two. Since the x acceleration and the y acceleration are constant, we can substitute that to the equation number one and number two of our uniform accelerated motions. Suppose our particle is at point x sub zero, y sub zero, when t is equal to zero, and the components of the velocity is v sub zero x and v sub zero y, the components of acceleration are a sub x is equal to zero and a sub y is equal to negative g. And considering the x motion or horizontal motion first, we substitute zero in UAM equation number one, where v sub x is equal to v sub zero x plus a sub x t. Substituting 0 time and 0 x at initial position, we therefore say that the final velocity is just equal to the initial velocity along the x-axis or v sub 0 x. Therefore, as time increases, as long as the projectile is in motion, doesn't hit the ground, okay, the velocity or the v sub x is just equal to the x component of the velocity vector. How about the position? How do we solve for the position? Using equation number 2, final position is equal to x sub 0 plus v sub 0 x t plus 1 half a sub x t squared. Substituting the values where x sub 0 is equal to 0, a sub x is equal to 0, and t is equal to 0, the final position at any time of the projectile along the x-axis is equal to 
v sub 0 x times time. Where v sub 0 x, again, is the x component of the initial velocity vector of the projectile. Okay? How about the vertical motion? Remember that in vertical motion, acceleration due to gravity affects the vertical motion. So let's start by calculating or deriving the formula for final velocity along the y-axis. Using equation number 1, v sub y is equal to v sub 0 y plus a sub y t. Substituting the values that we have there, v sub y is equal to v sub 0 y minus g times t. Either of the two here, you can utilize the equation to calculate for the final velocity at a given time. How about the position? For the vertical position y, at any time, it is equal to y sub 0 plus v sub 0 y t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. Where y sub 0 is equal to 0 and a sub y is equal to negative g, the position or the formula for the final position y at any time is equal to v sub 0 y t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. Let's now derive the equation for maximum height h in projectile motion. Let's first derive the equation for time needed to reach the maximum height. And we will derive that from this formula. V sub y is equal to V sub 0 y plus A sub y t. Now, let's recall that at maximum height, the velocity vector or the V sub y of our projectile is equal to 0. Making our equation will be 0 is equal to V sub 0 y plus A sub y t. From this, let's derive the, the equation for time by transposing and dividing both sides with A sub y t is equal to negative v sub 0 y a sub y. Okay? Now, let's also recall that for vertical position, our formula is this one. y is equal to v sub 0 y t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. So, for maximum height h, you can utilize this equation. We just replace y from equation 2 with h to represent maximum height. So you can utilize this if you already have that time. Okay? But if you don't want to solve for time, let's substitute t from this equation from the derived formula in equation number 1. So v sub 0 y is equal to negative v sub 0 y all over a sub y plus 1 half a sub y times negative v sub 0 y all over a sub y squared. Simplifying this term by term, so here, v sub 0 y minus v sub 0 y is equal to negative v sub 0 y squared all over a sub y plus 1 half v sub 0 y squared all over a sub y. What happens here? Remember that this part of the, uh, of the term, a sub y is raised to the power of 2, so this will become a sub y squared. And since we already have a sub y here, we can also cancel that one and we can cancel one of this a sub y so that the remain, remaining a sub y is only this one. Now, simplifying this, negative v sub 0 y squared all over a sub y plus 1 half v sub 0 y squared all over a sub y, h or maximum height is equal to negative v sub 0 y squared all over 2a sub y. So you can utilize this equation if v sub 0 y is known and t is unknown. Now, remember that v sub 0 y in case number 1 is equal to sine theta times v sub 0 or sine theta times the magnitude of our initial velocity vector. Now, if we're going to substitute that in our equation above, so, h is equal to negative v sub 0 sine theta squared all over 2a sub y. Simplifying this one, our third formula for maximum height is negative v sub 0 squared sine squared theta all over 2a sub y. 
And if you're going to input that in your calculator, that's sine squared theta, all you need to do is to square the sine theta value of a given angle. Let's talk about range. So the horizontal range R, big letter R, is the maximum distance along the horizontal plane the projectile travel before reaching the same vertical position where it came from. Now to derive the equations for range, let us consider the following. Let T sub 1 be equal to time required to reach the maximum height. Let T sub 2 be equal to time required to reach the maximum distance along the horizontal plane or range. Therefore, if that is the case, T sub 2 is just equal to 2 times T sub 1 for the same elevation. Now, recall that the position at any time, the, the horizontal position at any time for projectile is just equal to V sub 0 x T. Substituting the values for T here, R is just equal to V sub 0 x T sub 2. T sub 2 is the time required to reach the maximum distance along the horizontal. Okay? Now, substituting the value for T sub 2, which is equal to 2 times T sub 1, range is also equal to V sub 0 x times 2 times T sub 1. We can also substitute the expression T is equal to negative V sub 0 y all over A sub y. Remember, this equation here is the equation for time to reach the maximum height. So, therefore, r is equal to v sub 0 x to t sub 1 is just also equal to r is equal to v sub 0 x times 2 times negative v sub 0 y all over a sub y. Okay? We can also substitute the expression v sub 0 x is equal to v sub 0 cosine theta and v sub 0 y is equal to v sub 0 sine theta to the equation above. So if we're going to substitute the expression for v sub 0 x and v sub 0 y, so we have 2 times v sub 0 cos theta times negative v sub 0 sine theta all over a sub y. Simplifying this one, remember that trigonometric identity 2 sine theta cos theta it is also equal to sine 2 theta so the final formula for range is equal to negative v sub 0 squared sine 2 theta all over a sub y okay how to input sine 2 theta you just all you just need to do is input sine then 2 times the angle now, let's proceed to example number one, analyzing projectile motion. Carlos hit the soccer ball to his teammates. It leaves at a speed V sub zero is equal to 25.6 meters per second at an angle 67.3 degrees. Ignoring air resistance, find the following. Letter A, the coordinates of the position of the ball and its velocity or magnitude and direction at t is equal to 1.50 second. Letter B. Find the time when the ball reaches the highest point of its flight and its height h at this time. Letter C. Find the horizontal range covered by the soccer ball. So if we're going to illustrate that one, it will look like this. So this is a Case, this problem is an example for case number one. You, Carlos hit the soccer ball at an angle of 67.3 degrees. So let's find all the unknowns here. Start with letter A. Finding the coordinates of the position of the ball and its velocity, magnitude, and direction at t is equal to 1.50 second. Let's calculate the values of v sub 0 x and v sub 0 y. Let's recall that V sub 0 Y is equal to V sub 0 sine theta, okay? Where V sub 0 is our in initial velocity, okay? So let's substitute. 25.6 meters per second sine 67.3 degrees is equal to 23.62 meters per second. 
Let's start with your x coordinate. To find for the position at the x coordinate, we will use the equation x is equal to v sub 0 x t, where v sub 0 x is equal to v sub 0 cos theta. Okay? V sub 0 cos theta. So if you're going to input that in your calculator, v sub 0 is still 25.6 meters per second times cos sine 67.3. The answer is 9.879 meters per second. Times time natin na 1.50 second. We cancel out second here. So the remaining unit is for position, meter. So 9.879 times 1.50, the x coordinate is equal to 14.8 meters. Let's continue. For y coordinate, we will use the equation y is equal to v sub 0 y t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. Let's substitute the values. v sub 0 y is 23.62 meters per second times 1.50 plus 1 half negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Our acceleration at the vertical uh, motion times 1.50 second raised to the power of 2. So we can cancel out seconds in this case. The remaining unit is in meters. So 23.62 times 1.50 is equal to 35.43 meters. Minus 11.025, the product of this 3 in our second term. So simplifying this one, y is equal to 24.41 meters. So that is now our x and y coordinates. Let's proceed to calculating the values of v sub x and v sub y. Recall that v sub x is equal to v sub 0 x because horizontal motion is always constant in velocity. So, uh, v sub 0 x is equal to v sub 0 sine theta that is equal to 9.789 meters per second. Next, v sub y is equal to v sub 0 y plus a sub y t where v sub 0 y is equal to 23.62 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 1.50 second. We cancel out the unit seconds here so that the remaining second here, so that the remaining unit for this term is only meters per second. Okay? Simplifying, so we have 23.62 meters per second minus 14.7 meters per second, our V sub Y is equal to 8.917 meters per second. So that is now our x and y coordinates for the velocity vector. Now, let's use Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude and let's calculate for direction using tangent theta. V or the magnitude is equal to square root of v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. Substituting the values, we have 9.879 meters per second squared raised to the power of 2, I mean, plus 8.916 meters per second raised to the power of 2. Okay? Getting the square, adding both, then getting the square root, the magnitude of our velocity vector is equal to 13.31 meters per second. Now, to calculate for direction, we will use tangent theta. Okay, or theta is equal to arc tan v sub y all over v sub x. Substituting the values, we have 8.916 meters per sec second all over 9.879. Our angle is equal to 42.07 degrees. Thus, at 1.50 second, the soccer ball is at 14.8 meters, 24.1, 41 meters with a velocity vector 13, 13. 0.31 meters per second at 42.07 degrees. Now, let's proceed to letter B. Finding the time to reach the maximum height and the maximum height itself. From our equation, V sub Y is equal to V sub 0 Y plus A sub Y T1 is equal to 0. Substituting or deriving the formula for T sub 1, 
sub 1 is equal to negative v sub 0 y all over a sub y. Where v sub 0 y is equal to negative 23.62 meters per second divided by acceleration due to gravity that is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The answer is 2.410 second. Since we already have the time to reach the maximum height, let's use... Uh, the formula for maximum height, which is equal to v sub 0 y t plus 1 half a sub, a sub y t squared. So, let's substitute the values. 23.62 meters per second times 2.410 second plus 1 half negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.410 second raised to the power of 2. Okay? Now, let's simplify it term by term. We can, uh, we can cancel out second in this case. So, 23.62 times 2.41 is equal to 56.92 meters. Minus the product of this 3 here performing the operation for the second term that is equal to negative 28.46 meters. Combining the two, our maximum height is equal to 28.46 meters. Thus, it takes 2.410 seconds to reach 28.46 meters, the maximum height reached by the soccer ball. Let's proceed now to letter C, finding range. To calculate for range, let's find first the value for T sub 2 since our soccer ball already hit the ground at T sub 2. At this case, we have now Y is equal to 0. So, from our equation y is equal to v sub 0 y t squared, t sub 2 plus 1 half a sub y t sub 2 squared, that is equal to 0. Now, rearranging this one, we have another quadratic equation. Now, since this is a quadratic equation, it has two roots. One of its root is 0. And the second root is calculated using this formula negative 2 times v sub 0 y all over a sub y. Now, using this formula, let's substitute the values then, where 2 is multiplied to 23.62 meters per second, but don't forget that there is a negative sign here, all over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Performing all the necessary operations, multiply then divide. The second root, for time is equal to 4.820 second. Now, let's substitute the value for t sub 2 in equation for range. Range is equal to v sub 0 x t sub 2, where v sub 0 x is equal to 9.879 meters per second, multiplied by 4.820 second. Range is equal to 47.18 meters. Thus, the soccer ball covered a range of 47.18 meters after being kicked by car. And we are now done with case number one. Let's proceed to case number two. The, pro the projectile is thrown horizontally. So if that is the case, we don't have v sub zero y. We don't have the y component of our initial velocity vector that is zero because we don't have we don't have because our initial velocity vector are illustrated in this manner so what will happen now to our x component the x component or v sub zero x is just equal to the magnitude of the initial velocity vector so for v sub zero x that is always equal to v sub zero but all the equations that we derive kanina can still be Utilize for case number two. So, let's solve this one. Mark and his friend went to Kanibad to enjoy the summer and try cliff diving. In 53.0 meter high cliff, with respect to the surface of the water, Mark dives horizontally with a speed of 32.5 meters per second. Letter A. How long does he remain in the air before hitting the sea water? Letter B, at what horizontal distance from the diving point does he strike the sea water? And letter C, what is the vertical component of the velocity as he strikes the surface of sea water? 
So if we're going to illustrate that one, this is now our illustration. So from the surface of the water to this point, the diving point or the launching pad of Mark, it has a height of 53.0 meters. Okay? And then the range are calculated from this point to this point where this point represents the area or the position Mark hits the surface. And if you can see here, it is as if half this trajectory is half of the full parabolic trajectory, trajectory in case number one. So why v sub y is equal to zero at this point for case number two? Because this is the maximum height reached by the projectile. Okay, so this is zero here. So what is our given? V sub zero is equal to 32.5 meters per second. And our y, or change in position, is equal to negative 53.0 meters. And let's solve for the following. Let's start with letter A. Let's evaluate first the vertical motion in this problem. Take note that the initial vertical position of the projectile y sub 0 is equal to 0. And the final position is equal to negative 53.0 meters. Since it hits the surface already. Being this said, let's calculate for the time. From the main equation, y is equal to y sub 0 plus v sub 0 y t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. Substituting now the value for v sub 0 y, so that will become uh, y minus y sub 0 is equal to 0 t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. Since our y sub 0 is also 0, so our equation now will become y is equal to 1 half a sub y t squared. Let's now isolate t and derive the formula for time. So from this, we will multiply both sides with 2 to eradicate the 1 half on the right side of our equation, making our equation be equal to 2 sub y over a sub y, which is equal to a sub y t squared all over a sub y. Dividing both sides with a sub y, t now is equal to square root of 2y all over a sub y. Okay, let's substitute now the values. t is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 53.0 meters all over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time is equal to 3.29 seconds. Thus, Mark stays in the air for 3.29 seconds before hitting the surface of the sea water. Next, let's proceed to letter B, finding the range. So, the value of our initial horizontal position is x is equal to 0 meters. Now, let x is equal to r. r is equal to x sub 0 plus v sub 0 xt plus 1 half a sub xt squared. So, this is a familiar equation. This is equation number 2 for uam. Now, substituting the values, we have 0 as our initial position plus 32.5 meters per second times 3.29 second plus 1 half times 0 times 3.29 second raised to the power 2. Why this is 0? Always remember that the acceleration for the horizontal motion is always 0. So this is can now be cancelled out and this can now be cancelled out. Therefore, R is equal to 107 meters. That is the product of 32.5 and 3.29 seconds. Thus, Mark covered 107 meters, the horizontal distance from the diving point to where he strikes the sea water. Last, let us see, finding V sub y. We will utilize the equation V sub y is equal to V sub 0 y plus A sub y t. Okay? Finding the vertical velocity, okay? So, V sub y is equal to 0 plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 3.29 second, okay? Because we are looking for the vertical component of Mark as he hits the surface of the sea water. So, we will still use 3.29 second as our time. Uh, combining these two, we can cancel out one second in this case. So negative 9.8 meters per second times 3.29. The answer is negative 32.2 meters per second. 
Okay? This is now the vertical component of the velocity as Mark hits the surface of seawater, which is equal to this value, negative 32.2 meters per second. Now, it's your turn to solve a problem. Solve example number 3. At the edge of the top of a 78.0 meter tall building, a janitor throws a stone at an angle of 78.0 degrees and it reaches a maximum height of 10.0 meters with respect to the rooftop. Find the following. A. What would be the minimum speed of the stone to reach the maximum height? B. How far from the building did the stone landed with respect to the ground? And letter C. How long does the stone in the air before reaching the ground? You may pause this video for a while to solve the problem. Whether your answer is correct or wrong, please open the file Additional Problems for Motion in Space Part 2. It contains the complete solution and the answer for this problem together with additional problems for this topic. And we are now done discussing projectile motion. I hope you learned the concept of projectile motion and you are now confident to solve for any projectile motion. Now stay put and open the next video file because we will now about to take or to discuss uniform circular motion.